I'll take you through several problems and um, you'll have to pick out the independent and dependent variable, the control group and the controlled variables. Uh, here's a ramp. What would the independent variable be? Well, what is it am I changing? Am I the scientist going to what, like run after the ball and like chase it and make it roll? No, that would be ridiculous. So that, the how far it's rolling cannot be the independent variable that I, the scientist, am changing, right? Because it's just silly. So therefore, what am I changing? I, the scientist, am gonna change the height. So that means the height must be the independent variable, okay? What depends on what I changed? What data am I collecting? Well, that would be how far it's going to roll. My comparison group. Is there a natural thing? Not really. There's not like a natural ramp height. I mean, I suppose you could say, well, I'm going to just put the ball on the floor, but I think logic tells us it's not going to roll, right? Or I suppose you could do like completely vertical, maybe, as a comparison, but then it's going to bounce. So probably what we would do in this case is an internal control, which just means we're going to compare like, you know, a height of three centimeters to five centimeters to seven centimeters and um, use that as our comparison groups. Controlled variables, the things we keep the same. Hmm. Same ramp, same surface of ramp, same type of ball, same mass of ball, same... Um, well, really, it should be the same ball, period, right? Um, the amount of force we're using, like, are we pushing it? Probably not. We should probably set it because it's more easy to control and keep the same. Um, the surface that it's got to roll on after it goes down the ramp. There's a big, long list here. And again, remember, controlled variables has an S telling us there should be a list, guys. Okay? Next one. Hmm, independent variable. Well, I see one thing changing. I see these little green dots in these pictures that I don't see here. So that must mean, the key tells me it's fertilizer. So I, I the scientist, must be changing the amount of fertilizer. Okay, I'm increasing the amount of fertilizer. So that's my independent variable. Dependent variable. What duh? data am I going to collect that depends on the amount of fertilizer? Well, a lot of times kids want to say how well it grows. How would you actually measure that though? We want to make sure our dependent variables are always measurable, right? If you're going to say how well it grows, you're going to have to develop some sort of scale. That's going to be really hard to do. So height of the plant would probably be a good, easy, measurable thing, assuming you were able to start with all the same height. Um, maybe change in height would be better in case there's a little bit of difference in their starting height. I suppose you could do number of leaves as a dependent variable, um, but you wanna make sure it's measurable. Okay, and that's always something kids struggle with a little bit is in their dependent variable and naming it, make sure it's something that you can come up with numerical data. It should be quantitative data. Quantitative means like numerical data. Okay, control group in this one. Is there a natural condition for the plants? Yeah, this group here. This must be a, our control group. Controlled variables. Hmm, what should we keep the same? Well, we should make sure the starting, the type of soil, like where I got the soil from is the same, the size of the pot is the same, the amount of uh, water they're receiving is the same, the amount of light they're receiving is the same. It should be a big long list. It should be the same starting height, ideally, same type of plant. We want to try to make everything we possibly can the same except for the fertilizer. This one's kind of fun. Independent variable. What am I changing? 
Well, there's really only one thing different. Okay, so I must be changing the temperature of the water. Okay, what would be my dependent variable? What data would I expect to see? And this is, this is hard for a lot of kids to come up with. Um, you probably know water will spread out, that food coloring will spread out, right? And given enough time, all cups should be equally green. But we want to make it something measurable. So I've used this PowerPoint with my kids before. And so they often come up to the conclusion that maybe like the time it takes for it to become evenly green. But we recognize that like evenly is kind of vague. And so like someone's interpretation of when it's evenly spread out might be a little bit different than somebody else's. So is a dependent variable, is it the best one? Hard for this experiment, definitely. Control group. Eh, it's probably an internal control. Maybe room temperature water would be your control group because it's like the natural temperature of water, I guess. Controlled variables. Same amount of water, same amount of dye. You probably want the distance that you're dropping this from to be the same. You probably want to make sure that the water like has been sitting for the same amount of time because if it like if I just move that cup, it's going to be kind of like stirring a little bit internally, and that would make an impact. You want to make sure the table's not bumped. Um, there's a lot of like little things that you would want to try to control to make sure it's a really fair experiment. This is this is a great experiment to do with kinetic theory, by the way. All right, independent variable. Well, you're already kind of seeing the results in this picture, and that can be confusing for kids. They're like, okay, is the independent variable the type of flower? Well, probably it was the type of soil was the thing that I, the scientist, was changing. And I bet those plants all started as seeds or at least is the same height as one of our controlled variables. So I think independent variable in this case is going to be the type of soil. The dependent variable is probably the height of the plants. Control group, I don't think there is one. It's probably an internal control. Controlled variables, same amount of rain, same amount of cloud cover, same amount of shade, same amount of water, same amount of bugs pollinating the plants. Um, you can see that like some things would be easier to control than others. And that's one reason that a lot of um, science experiments are done indoors is because how are you going to control the cloud cover and the insects and things that might be eating the bug, eating the plants? Like you can't control that in nature. So a lot of times we run experiments inside because then we can control the environment a little bit more consistently. So if it helped you, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe because that tells YouTube that um, this is helpful and that they should recommend it to others. Okay, bye. Have a great day.